For our project, the virtual hole in the road, what we wanted to do was recreate an iconic place that's sort of no longer here. When I started talking to different people about the hole in the road, um, everyone seemed to have their own story about it, and own, own take on it, and some of them were good and some of them were bad, but people didn't seem to be neutral about it. They had an opinion one way or the other. So we had the idea then to, to team up with the Story in Sheffield team at University of Sheffield and they could kind of use their research and research methods and investigate further really and, and in their unique sort of way that they tell stories. Because my PhD and my poetry is about Sheffield, it just was an ideal fit to talk about uh, this what kind of iconic memory that people have. I met the guy who was the chief engineer, a guy called Peter. It, the idea was what they call grade separation, to separate the public from traffic. Uh, and the best way of doing that, they thought in the 70s, was to create underpasses. And this was basically a glorified underpass. But it had portals into the shops, and it had little kiosks, and it had a fish tank with, full of fish which became a meeting place and it had a bloke selling the star and the green and, and it became a kind of uh, a marketplace. So the virtual hole in the road experience will basically be on a, a Oculus Rift headset connected to a very powerful computer and when you put on the headset you'll be transported to the hole in the road and then you'll hear sounds and different things around you, you'll see different people walking around, you'll be able to move through the hole in the road and look around you. We were very lucky that Sheffield City Council agreed to share the original plans with us. And we've built this from scratch and it's very accurate. And then also the people that are going to be in it, which computer science have helped us with, they give a sense of, of, of vibrancy and um, also help with the scale of the place. And then we've also created our own pop-up shops uh, in the lower levels, because you used to have access to shops there. And, and some of those are things that would exist now, but we've also retained CNA, which used to be in there, which um, was, was quite an iconic place. A lot of that, the inspiration has come from what's happened here at, at Park Hill, where we're based. Um, and this is, you know, it's from a similar time, and it's an iconic building that's been regenerated and, and loved again and restored to its former glory. So we're, we're really doing that, but in a, a virtual way. But I think the thing that everyone asks us about is the fish tank, <laughs> which was quite a, a feature that was in there. And, um, you know, people, if they went shopping with their parents or grandparents and they were, they were good, they were allowed to go and look at the fish tank. So a lot of people have asked about that. So we have got a fish tank, it's working. You can see the fish swimming about. And, um, yeah, it's very clean, not like it used to be. This is perfect, the way they've got the, uh, the tiles, it's just as I remember it. Oh, you can hear the traffic as well, that's fantastic. There's the fish tank. Yeah, everybody met at the fish tank. The star seller with his incomprehensible shout. <laughs> I've never been on one of those before. You really do feel like you're in it. But I think it's really well done, yeah. and the interviews come across really well. But uh, no, I think it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, I feel really proud of it, actually. Castle Square is where the hole in the road used to be. And I had never noticed more profoundly, there's a kind of fracture line, an economic, sociological fracture line, and a psychological fracture line. You go from M&S and Fargate and, and John Lewis and the kind of middle class world of Sheffield and you cross Castle Square and you meet Poundland and Primark and Wilkinson's and, the, and, and, and what was the Castle Market that's gone now. But the people change and it, it, it's so noticeable that, that fracture line across the city. I think whatever we do in our activity we, we try and sort of engage and inspire people really you know and connect to people so this project's very much a Sheffield project you know it's very locally based and you know it's aimed at people in the city but then equally 
People from outside the city are very inquisitive to find out why there's so much interest about what was essentially a subway. <laughs> so um, it works on that level and also from a, a technical point of view, uh, it's a real challenge for us to create this um, and it, it's something that we wanted to do. I, I mean the festival for me is just it's a, a fantastic 10 days for the city you know and it's a chance for people to experience things they wouldn't normally see totally for free in their own city um, and you know they can kind of take a risk on things if you like or step outside their normal comfort zones and go and see something and and learn about something new and um, I think it's great that, that they see these things that, that are happening in their own city and I, th I think the people in Sheffield uh, take a lot of pride in that. <laughs>